Well, there are two things that I can honestly say about caregiving. And the first thing is that it's not for the faint of heart. And the second thing about it is that it really cannot be done alone. Caregivers cannot carry this burden alone. They need support. And oftentimes, caregivers may feel guilty asking for help, and they ask themselves, why can't I do this by myself? Why can't I do this alone? And they become very tired, very fatigued, and have a difficult time keeping up with the other things that they have happening in their lives. And so we pride ourselves in being part of their support system. They need a support system. And there's no harm in asking for help. There's no shame in asking for help. So we like to be that safety net and that support system that they need. Me, the most important aspect of my job is helping the older people gain, have independence. I feel like independence is very, very important. And the more you are able to do for yourself, the healthier your life will be and the longer you live, you'll live. So for me, I encourage whomever I work with to do as much for themselves as possible. We were able to kind of monitor things in a, in, in a more individual way and it's nice for the families to know that the, their family members in a safe environment during the day. One of the things we do is we kind of look out for people and um, uh, one time I remember that this, uh, one of the nurse's aides said to me, there's something going on, do you think you can come and check him? So I, we brought him in a wheelchair to the nurse's office and I was able to take his blood pressure. It was quite low, so I arranged him in the cot with his feet up and um, we, he drank lots of fluids and called the doctor, called the family. And um, by the time the family came for him, his blood pressure was within a normal range and they were able to take him to the doctor the next day and uh, luckily they were able to, the doctor noticed that he was getting too much blood pressure medicine so they decreased the medicine and the family was so thankful because they said a trip to the emergency room is so difficult with him. Just today I was reminded of a participant that started not too long ago who um, was really not enthusiastic about being here. Um, she knew her family wanted and needed her to be here because they worked and um, she needed to be somewhere safe and also somewhere that would keep her stimulated and, and engaged. I would see that even in those early days, um, she would be enjoying herself in spite of herself, especially during um, the music and dance programs, um, she would be grabbing partners to come up and dance with her. Um, so uh, that was wonderful to see. Just today I was reading a poem after lunch, um, which is sometimes uh, when I like to try to connect with the participants. And um, this, this woman has a, a hard time communicating now. I was reading a poem by Wordsworth and she was absolutely enthralled the whole time. And when I was done, she asked for the paper and she took it and she started reading it out loud. And she was stumbling over some of the words, but she kept reading and at the end she was smiling and she was so happy. And. Um, and that was just a really beautiful moment to be a part of. I enjoy communicating in my work here very much. Um, uh, and one of the ways in which I communicate with our older adults is uh, through the use of foreign languages, for instance, Spanish. So we have a participant who uh, speaks and understands only Spanish. And um, I have some knowledge of Spanish that helps me to uh, work with him. A lot of people are a little anxious about new social situations. And so I try to just kind of make people relax by distracting away from their personal issues a little bit. And so a lot of times we may connect on things like food or whatever. And so some of the ladies have, you know, known me 
Um, I tell them, well, I don't give away recipes or whatever. Just something to make them smile, to make them laugh. I try to get them to relax, to let them know we're all the same. We all have the same ideas. We all have the, you know, that little inner child that just wants to kind of scream when everybody says, be quiet. And so I, I try to convey to them, it's okay to just be yourself. And, you know, the transitional period, for some people it could be a week, some, for some people it could be a month, but that's the, the key time to get people to kind of relax. And once they've made those friends and they realize that, hey, we are not stiff and rigid here, then they feel more comfortable coming on a daily basis. Registered nurses are here every day and they're monitoring the health and well-being of our participants. And the nurses can also serve as a liaison between the participant and their physician. So if they have any concerns or if they see something that's beginning to happen in the early stages, for instance, uh, somebody's blood pressure is starting to rise, they can reach out to the physician and talk to them about the concern. And that's also helpful to the caregiver. Our goal is to help reduce the caregiver burden. So we are here to provide that support.